Good to have again Kenneth here this morning. Yeah. Everybody else, make sure everybody lets Ken know we appreciate him being here. I know Rita's pretty excited about it. And glad to have Rita back too. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Rita's been sick lately. Amen. Let's all stand and ask the Lord to have his way in the service today. Heavenly Father, thank oh, you for your goodness, Father, all you your wonderful praise. grace. And Lord, we thank Lord, you we bless your for this opportunity day. to be in your house. Lord, you have you your way to praise you, Lord. You speak, you move. Meet us in the altar, Lord, and let your name be lifted up. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Amen. If Christ lives in your heart, you have that key. You got that key. Amen. Entrance. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Amen. 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 We're going to go to the Lord this morning in prayer. Just want to encourage you to be praying for some that we had several visitors here last week and good to see family and friends that we love to be in the house of the Lord. And there was some that raised their hand, didn't come to pray. And so let's just remember God would just get a hold of hearts. Amen? Sure. And God would say, that's the main thing, is to not just to be touched by God, but to surrender to God and let Him have His way in our hearts and lives. Surrender ourselves. Accept Him as our Savior. Amen. If it wasn't for that, where would we be this morning, right? That's right. Amen. 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 Everybody out there this morning? Yes, we are. Get some good sleep last night. <laughs> Hey, Amen. God's good, isn't he? All the God's time. God's good. Amen. Amen. Just hope you've had a wonderful week. It's going to get beautiful. Uh, keep getting warmer today, and you just it's just a, just a beautiful day the Lord's made, and uh, we just thank the Lord for it. We had a good service last week, and we had uh, yes, we did. and we had just they had some. I seen I never seen so many eggs being packed out of here. I've, and my, I I seen some crazy sights of uh, just just overload. I tell you what. I even see giant bunnies. I don't know. I tell you what, we seen it all around here last week. We saw it all. Amen. God is good today. And we're going to go to the Lord, asking the Lord to uh, touch those again that that, uh, that wasn't saved, that was here, and, and that the Lord would even move today in our service. I got a text from Sister Marcella Sella this morning. She, uh, she's she got a stomach bug, been up all night sick. And so just remember, Sister Marcella, that the Lord would touch her. Amen. Heal her. Help her, and then, of course, Terry. Lord would touch Terry. And uh, good to see Rita back. She's been sick for a few weeks, and just glad to see her being able to be back, and, of course, with her son. Remember my brother-in-law, Lee, he's still, uh, he's still at Baptist Lexington and Baptist Health, and just he'll be probably pretty quickly going back uh, for therapy at Cardinal Hill. So remember him. He's doing a little better. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. <clears throat> and then we're praying for Cynthia's mom and dad, Estella and Ernesto, that the Lord would do a work in their lives, help them, strengthen them. Praying for Connie and Cheryl, that the Lord would move in their needs. Amen. And uh, what other needs do you have this morning to take to the Lord in prayer? Yes, Makar. Okay, let's remember those those three needs. Amen. Lord, we just heal. Amen. Amen. That's good. That's good. Who else this morning? You've got a need. Remember, Roger, he's been uh, sick all week with the virus. Okay. And uh, let's remember our two sons, they will be saved. Yes. Amen. Roger and these two sons. Amen. Lord would move. Amen. Who else? Uh, remember my family and Yes. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Amen. Uh, all these needs. Who else this morning? Remember my family. Amen. Remember all my family, James, my son, and my grandkids. And remember Jed and her family. Remember her brother in law, George. Yes. Sick and he's done a lot better. Remember us. But I'm in Steve work with on the railroad. Yeah. He's Philip Heffenberg. And he lives at London there. And he lives a lot. He was our supervisor. And he's a good guy. Yes, let's remember Philip, amen, and all these needs, amen. Who else this morning? There was a <clears throat> that called uh, your dad uh, last night and was uh, talking about a situation of a person and they were worried about this person and so uh, it's unknown, I'm not telling the name, but God knows who it is and, and we just pray that this person gets things back right with God. Yes, oh, yes. yes. Yes, it's so important. Yes, amen. Amen. The Lord He's knows. Crying out for a mother, so. yes. yes. Amen. God knows that need. Yes. <clears throat> that reminded me, I, 
I ran into someone yesterday that I knew, and without giving any details, this person is was asking for help and the Lord to help them. They've got a substance problem, mm -hmm. and uh, and so just that the Lord knows exactly who that is. Yes, and they have a heart toward Him, and they're they're asking when they're asking for prayer and for help, mm -hmm. and so just the Lord knows who that is. Amen. 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 Any, Okay, Eddie Hoskins, amen. Just remember that need, yes, yes, yes. Amen. You remember my family, my children, my grandbabies, then a friend that <clears throat> I told you all a few weeks ago was really serious. She's back in the hospital, really low blood pressure, and mm. they, her digestive system's not working like they want it to. And then I have a friend that just found out she has pancreatic cancer oh. and she has a disabled son and she really needs God to move on her and her son. Yes. And then, um, girl, I told you that watches online, Darla Campbell, let's keep her in our prayers. Yes. Amen. Let's remember all these needs. Amen. The Lord would move, especially in these needs. Amen. Yes. Amen. I Not to do that. God is good if the whole world would just see. Right. He's the answer. He's the answer. That's right. Amen. 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 All right. Let's remember the rest of the service that the Lord would have his way in the message and then and meet us right here in this altar. We just have, oh, I just want to have yes, the it. Lord do mighty things in our altar services. Amen. Yes. Amen. Would you stand and help me pray for these needs? Take them to the Lord. In prayer. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you, Lord, for your mighty power. Mighty glory is We come, Lord, today just to sit in prayer. We come before you. Thank you, Lord, for your own prayer. Lord, we pray that, Lord, we would bless you. Move in Estelle. Move in Ernesto, God, that your mighty name is God, that you will heal this wound. God, that you will bring him out. God, we are the Lord. God, move mortally. Lord, minister to him by your mighty prayers. Lord, move to these needs that we need to have. God, Lord, for this lady. God, for the hearts of hell. God, Lord, for this other Lord that's got this anger on the cancer. God, that Lord, the Lord's moving away. God, she would know. Turn it around. God, heal her. God, Lord, with us, Lord, and Roger, and you will touch him for her. And God, Lord, these two sons that God, you would minister, Lord, for Ed, that you would minister to him, I pray, that God, that you would change him, Lord, and answer him, pray, God, that you would move Roger to all day on the power of Lord, you know, the need. God, move him, Steve, and this one, this Lord, this 36 year old with the Lord, with the best cancer, Lord, Lord, to do a miracle in her body. God move in this extended family. Oh God, move in this special need that mom had. Lord, you know the one that I brought up. God, you can do a work in these people. You know who they are. God, Lord, move in Russell in this extended family. Lord, I've gone to George and thank you for that better report. God, I see in each and every one of them, God. that, Lord, to everyone in your hands. Lord, we trust you and thank you that you're working and moving. And God, there's nothing too big for you. Not one thing that you're doing, Lord, that you're not able to do even today. God, we pray that you would do it. We're thanking you, Lord, right now that you are, that you're moving, you're working, that you're transforming, you're healing, you're changing, you're delivering. And we thank you, Lord. That's what you do. That's what you do, God. You do the impossible. God, now meet us, Lord, even today. Bless this service. Bless the message. Bless the altar. And that your name would be lifted up because of it. God, we glorify you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah.
Amen. Amen. Man, if our brothers will come this morning, we'll come and receive to today our tithe and offering. Amen. Thank you for giving. May the Lord richly bless you for all that you're able to do. Amen.
Lord, you're worthy of all praise. Lord, if we praised you the way we should, oh God, we would never stop, Lord, because you're worthy. You're good. You're mighty. Lord, without you, we have no hope. And we lift you up today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Even the heavens declare His glory. Amen. 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 So glad you're here today. And that's what we're going to look at for a few minutes. I'm, I know that uh, everybody here is aware of, of the current events and tomorrow, what we're getting ready to, we're getting ready. And many of you, I don't know if some of you have probably been, I tell you what, I don't know how many people I've talked to, they've got their, they've got their eclipse glasses ready to go. I will tell you, if I forget to tell you, be careful, don't be staring at this event tomorrow with your naked eye. Even though we're not in the totality path, we're going to have quite a bit of could be effect. We could see this, but just be careful. It's very eye doctors are going to really capitalize out of this, and so be careful. But we are getting ready to see some events, yes. and today we're going to look at a message that we're titling "The Heavens Declare the Glory of God." The heavens declare. The glory of God. Stand for one verse. This won't take long today. You, we're just going to get some blood back to your knees there. Today we're going to look at Psalms 19.1 and see this verse that says this. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament sheweth His handiwork. Yes. Let me read that to you one more time. The heavens declare the glory of God Amen. and the firmament sheweth His handiwork. Amen. We should know God exists by just looking into the wondrous glories of the heavens. Amen. Yes. And the things that we see. Let's just pray. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for the glory that you have revealed to us. That God, that everywhere we look, we can see you and things that you have made. Things that you have set forth. Things that obey your commands. God, let us be as the heavens that we obey you completely. And God, that we would be more assured by the things that we see that your coming is very soon. Yes. And God, that our hearts would overflow with worship and joy yes, in the God that we serve. God, open your word today. Reveal it to us through the spirit of the Holy Ghost. And then God, meet us in this altar that we would leave here different people, changed and challenged. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. 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 You could be seated this morning. Amen. So tomorrow, if you've been really kind of keeping up with a little bit, and I, you know, I don't, I, I've gotten to where I'll see some of the current events, but I'll miss, especially social media, I'm, I'll miss a lot on social media, I'm, and, I, and I probably should be more plugged in uh, to know what's going on, but I found out that I feel better about myself and the world that I live in if I'm not. So a lot of times social media, I won't know all your things you may think I'll know. If you post something, I probably didn't see it. But in the news, and I try not to do a lot of that because it's pretty negative, isn't it? But there's a lot of things happening right now. In fact, then just, just even tomorrow, this very time that we're living right now, there are several events that should catch our attention to realize this is not normal. This is not just uh, uh, something that just, oh, it's just a coincidence. And sometimes the world we live, that we see these things individually by themselves, and they may look like it's, well, it's just a good coincidence. Wow, that's pretty interesting. But there's a lot of things going on right now that caught my attention. Of course, we know that there'll be this total eclipse tomorrow, and, uh, and uh, the United States will be very greatly impacted across the center of the United States. About 31 million people will be in the total uh, path of the totality of the darkness. And uh, in Kentucky, the farthest extremist west, around the Paducah area maybe, in a big area of uh, Indiana, and then, of course, it goes on up. It's, it's going to go across from Mexico on across the U.S. And so there'll be a, there's a lot of people on the road right now to get, the, I can imagine what they're charging for rooms in that path, and Indiana's really going to be impacted. I know some people personally that's in Indiana right now waiting for this big event. So we know that this, one of the things that's rare about this event that we're seeing right now, this is, you know, we have eclipses at different times every couple of years or two and a half years, there'll be some eclipse that affects uh, the world. But this is a rare one that we're experiencing in the United States. In fact, it's a very rare one that actually impacts that in totality, 
a total eclipse, especially in the state of Ohio, that it impacts the state of Ohio. In fact, the last time that this exact type of event happened was 1806. 1806. And so it's, it's uh, another thing that makes this uh, rare that's happening at the exact same time. You may have missed this. But there is also a comet that will be uh, visible during, uh, possibly, very possibly visible if you're, if you're protecting your eyes and looking during this event, there will be a comet that will appear uh, to the north, I think northwest, but it's going to be maybe 25 degrees north of the sun during this event. And this comet, I looked at it, I forgot its exact name, I should have wrote it down, but it's got a scientific name, of course. But, the, but, it's, but its given name is what caught my attention. And it's in this, a comet is these, they've got some definitions of what caused comets from the, of course, they think it's the Big Bang that caused all this, but we know that it was God that created everything. But there, it's, all, it's got gases that surround it, and it's, and it's off gassing as it passes, and it's got these incredible colors of, of green and blue and, and orange. And, uh, and so, but if you look at this comet, it looks like it's got two horns on it, and they've named it the Devil, the Devil Comet. And it's going to come right near the sun area. You may be able to, if those that are able to watch it might be able to get a picture of this or be able to see this thing with the naked eye during the same time. That caught my attention a little bit. Also, NASA is, is launching three what they're calling sounding rockets right into the path of this this area and during this eclipse to do scientific tracking. So they're trying to get readings off the uh, what changes in the atmosphere happen during this event. So the government's involved. In fact, you know one of the things that got my teacher, I thought, well, this is such a little deal. I, I was listening to an article by in Texas, Emergency Management, and they have been planning for this particular event for two years. They have, this has been something that's not just common, common to them, but they have been preparing for this very event for two years. That should get your attention, I guess. So, it, and also at the same time, you've probably maybe not heard this either, but the world's largest particle accelerator, which is located in Geneva, Switzerland, which is, uh, of course, we know uh, uh, our Henry. Henry's the daughter and, and son, uh, live there, this particle accelerator has been taken offline for three years and they've upgraded it with all these new components and have got it fine-tuned. I was watching a little video clip of how excited they are because they're going to be, able, they're turning it on at this very time and it's been upgraded. It's going to be the most powerful. It's already the most powerful, but they have upgraded it to where it's crashing all these particles in this fine beam it's a massive machine and it's going to be turned on during this period uh to, to track also at the exact same time this and so it's and it's an amazing machine you might want to look it up but it's it's located at CERN outside of Geneva Switzerland and they are going to record the uh, the effects of this event during this eclipse the, the final thing that I was seeing, there's other things, but there's also, I uh, read this article by this scientist that called it uh, cicada geddon. Instead of Armageddon, it's cicada geddon. We know that, you know, cicadas come out, and there's, there's a certain variety that comes out every year. Once a year, they come out, they burrow into the ground, and, and they come out once a year. But there is this, uh, there's these other varieties that only come out every 13 or 17 years that they come out. This just this year, since uh, about the, I think about the same time this this 1806. Since that period, there's never been there is going to be these this new this new type that's we haven't seen in a long time is going to come out at the same time. Still, usually you have one or the other, but at this time they're going to be all coming. The number, the sheer number of these that's getting it's burrowing up. At the, in fact, I think they're saying tomorrow is going to be when these things start appearing. Crawling out every 13, they, they, uh, these are a red-eyed periodical cicada. They only come out, they're, uh, they're like a brown color instead of the green, and they turn black uh, after they mature. 
But when they come out, they, they're very, you know, you, cicadas make a lot of noise. It says that their collective um, song is louder than a jet engine. Here, here is one, the thing that says the, uh, it says that there is going to be trillions of these. And even a, one number says maybe quadrillions of these it's going to burrow up. And so don't be afraid that there's, you know, this is like locusts and they're going to take it. Supposedly they're not that dangerous, but the, the event, there's going to be like two different, they have these different colonies that come up at different times and there's going to be, they're going to be coming up at the same time. And it's going to be a massive event. And it only happens in the eastern United States. So we are privileged to be part of that. So if you see all these crazy looking, alien looking bugs all over the trees of your house and you know there's shells and stuff, just realize this is something that it does happen every so often. But it's been, it's been a couple hundred years since we've seen this type of event happen. And we're just lucky enough to be alive when it's happening again. All these things are happening. Now, before I get into this message, I'm not telling you that the Lord's coming back tomorrow, although he could come back today. Yes. I'm just trying to tell you that the heavens, that even nature, the things that we're seeing should cause us to be aware that we are seeing so many things happening and at such a rapid speed. And it's happening in such, we're seeing earthquakes, we're seeing all kinds of events. We know scripture says that when these things begin to happen, it's a sign that the Lord's coming yes, it is. is soon. And so we should take into uh, to our hearts and, and to realize the Lord is giving us some signs. Today we're going to look at a few things that the heavens declare so that we would know. First of all, we're going to see the heavens declare as our slide is, our title is today, the glory of God. Let me read that verse I read to you in the, in the King James verse 1. I'm going to read verse 1 through 6 in the ES, the English Standard Version, because let me show you that the heavens should, and we know this, declares the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims His handiwork. Isn't it a beautiful thing that we see? Day to day pours out speech. The, the skies, the, the stars, the moons, the things that we see, that pours out speech. The night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech. Nor are there words whose voice is not heard. They're not saying things with their actual voice, but we, we are receiving from what we see. We see it and they speak volumes to our hearts. Their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which cometh out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them. There is nothing hidden from its heat. We see that the glory of the things that God has created is a testimony that you look at that and there's no way that just accidentally happened. There's no way that this glory and splendor of the heavens was something that was just an accident, but it was something that was put there by the deliberate voice of God. And those heavens, if you look, they're these wonderful things, this earth and the stars and the sun hang upon Nothing. But yet they do. They hang there upon the commandment of the Lord. Amen. They spoke into existence and, and they were created. And they stay where they are in direct command that God put them there. And that's what we should learn from the things that we see. Nature declares the existence of God and the glory of his creation. Romans 1 tells us about this. Paul said, For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. You cannot look at the things that God has created. I don't care how much you say you're an atheist. You cannot look at all the splendor and the glory of the heavens and not be amazed and say there has to be a God. There is no way you can do that. You know, there was, uh, with, my, with my new position, occupation, uh, our pilots and our flight crews with the helicopters, they have uh, night vision goggles. Now, I've not got to try this yet because I've not been up there at night, but I, I'm, I'm kind of excited to try this. They're, they're, they're night vision goggles they said if you, get, uh, if you use those to look up at the sky on a dark night, 
that you will see stars that you have never, you will see lights and stars that you have never, you didn't even know was there. And more incredible than anything you could ever see with the naked eye is, is that it's just, it's almost like going up to a planetarium or something. It so, is amazing to look through. Yes. Yes. So I, I look forward to that. And to be able to see that all that God has created yes. and all the glory which points toward God. This, these things that we're seeing, even this eclipse, this amazing thing. By the way, eclipse is, is when everything is perfectly lined up. The sun, which you know, we, we are, we, it is going around us once per day. Or, you know, it's, it, we're spinning around. And, but there is, and then we have the moon. And when a total eclipse is when the, the moon completely exactly sits exactly between us and the sun and, and blocks the light. So we see that the um, heavens declare God's glory. The heavens also declares God's authority. Joshua was marching with the children of Israel into the promised land and they'd already defeated the little city of Ai and they'd already defeated Jericho, this massive city that the Lord, we know that the walls fell flat. And Gibeon, for fear that they were, they knew they were getting ready to be destroyed and they came and made peace with Israel and they joined forces with Israel well when the other nations around them heard that Gibeon had joined forces with Israel it made them so angry that the kings gathered together in massive massive numbers and they came against Gibeon they were going to destroy them because they they caved in and joined with Israel the word came to Joshua you need to come and help save us because we're being attacked because of Join forces with you. We see that God showed His authority over, you know, some people believe that God spun the world into existence and just left it. That He's not doesn't have any impact, that doesn't have any impact in your life today. You're just on your own. God doesn't get involved and God's just there, unconcerned. Well, we know that's not the case. This, this army gathered against them and so we know that Joshua gathered his army and join with Gibeon. God gave him a promise and said, don't worry, I've already given them into your hands. And we see something kind of amazing that Joshua did when they get, went into battle. I'm just trying, without, without reading the whole chapter, they, they, started, they were fighting and they were wiping out the enemy. The enemy started running. As the enemy began to run, God sent down... Uh, meteors and, 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 and things falling out of the sky, rocks or, or, or hail or whatever. And he started wiping out the enemy ahead of Joshua. And Joshua wanted to destroy them before the night fell because he knew that if the darkness fell, that some of those would slip away. And with that asking God, let me show you what he did. And it's an amazing thing. It's one of the only times in Scripture you'll ever see this. In Joshua 10 10 through 14, and the Lord discomfited them before Israel and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon and chased them along the way that goeth up to Beth Haran and smote them to Azekah and unto Makeda. And it came to pass as they fled before Israel and were in the going down to Beth Haran that the Lord cast down great stones as they fled from before Israel and were in the going down to Beth Haran and the Lord cast down great stones from the heaven upon them unto Azka, and they died, and were more and were more which died with hailstones, hailstones, than they whom the Lord of or the children of Israel slew with the sword. Then spake Joshua unto the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Agilon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven, and hasted not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it, that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. You see, God is very involved in the world that you live and in your life. And God has authority, not only over the problems of your life, but over even nature Amen. 
itself. We seen that with the Lord showed that himself. He was in the boat and we showed the Lord showed that his voice, you know, he easily can control something he created. His voice created everything we see. And it's saying the voice, the word of God controls it. Amen. We see in Matthew 8, 23, he says, And when he had entered into his ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there, grow, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the ship was covered with the waves. But he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he saith unto them, Why are you fearful? O oh, ye of little faith. Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea. There was a great calm. See, God has authority over nature. Amen. He created it. And his same voice that he creates, he controls. Well, we could learn a lot from nature, couldn't we? Yes. Yes. That when God speaks and God gives us his word, God speaks through his word. Yes. God speaks to you and I today. Are we obedient even as nature is? I hope we are. The third thing is the heavens also declare God's redemption. You see, we, we looked at this the last couple of weeks talking about the Lord going to the cross and paying the price. And during that time while on the cross, while Jesus was hanging for your sin and my sin on Golgotha's hill, and during the peak of the day, He was crucified at nine in the morning and at noon when the sun was at its highest, its hottest, its brightest when it should have been, we see that there was a total eclipse that covered the earth for a period of not three minutes, but three hours. Mm -hmm. It says in Luke 23, 44 through 45, and it was about the sixth hour, which would have been noon, starts at six, that there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour, till three. And the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. Scripture throughout the Bible, we know that many times that Scripture talks about evil and sin as darkness. The darkness of this world. The darkness of sin. The darkness of men's hearts. It's talking and it reveals darkness as sin, as evil. We also know that Scripture refers to God's glory, God's presence God's light that Christ said that that he was the light of the world and now you and I that he lives within us we are now the light of the world what does light do it pushes back darkness yeah, doesn't it while Jesus was on that cross and when all of your sin think of the worst things that you've ever done sometimes it's a good thing to forget it's a, we were talking about memory this morning people that can't forget anything they've got a photographic memory and they can remember everything they've ate you can tell them what day well that's incredible mm. to have so much detail that you can remember a meal you ate 20 years ago and what it was wow. that, I mean it'd be nice when you're taking an exam it's wonderful to have that we all want that when we're taking tests well, I mean, we flip through a book and I've got it you know, I've got it. I'm ready to take the test. I'm ready to take the bar. I'm ready to take whatever. But when you can't forget, that's, that's not a good thing. But sometimes when we look at the sin, I, I want to forget what I, who I used to be. Yeah. I say that that man's dead, and he is. He is in the scriptural or spiritual sense. He's dead. He's no longer exists. Even though that, the same body, that sin nature, died at, a, at, a, at an altar. And thank God that every day we try to keep it under the blood. Amen. Yeah. But everything, the vilest sins that you ever created or ever did was on Christ that day. The vilest sinners that's ever lived, those sins Christ bore on a cross. It was so vile. It was so incredible. Sin was so massive upon the Lord that He took upon Himself that God had to pull His Spirit back and even nature refused the sun would not even shine. Because of Christ and what he was going through. It says that the, and then we know that there was a great earthquake. And that the rocks broke up and graves popped open. And even in the temple, the veil was torn from the top to the bottom. Nature gave a testimony of who was on that tree. But what amazed me is that there was two groups there that day. There was those that was the vile sinners that was 
wicked men that was pagans that didn't know that was professionals in killing and probably took joy in doing it. And they crucified Christ, these Roman soldiers. And these Roman soldiers was able to take in. Can you imagine three hours with no light? I mean, we're going to go, if you were in the total totality part of this, uh, uh, 30 some, about 31 million is going to be able to see that if they look. Total darkness. The greatest total darkness I've ever been in, and I've told you this, was in Mammoth Cave. And when you get about a half mile underground inside that cave and they turn out the lights, you have never, I don't care what you imagine darkness looks like, it's not like your bedroom. It's not, it, I think if they hit you in the head, you would even see stars. It's so dark. It's that dark. I've never seen darkness that dark. There is no light. There is no light. And we know that, we know that the, for three hours, the sun refused to shine. And these pagans was able to say, this means something. This is a sign. Yes, truly this is a sign. sign. And then the earthquake. My goodness. This is a sign. This, and what was their end result? They said, surely this was the sign. Here's the oh, sinners. God. The ones that was the most pagan, ungodly yes. men is able to say, we are able to take in what we've just went through. There is nothing natural about this. This has got to be the Son of God. And the religious leaders of that day brushed it off to the side and they still would not believe. Instead of repenting, instead of seeing the mercy of God and calling out saying, God, we've been wrong. There's, you, how many signs do you have to give us? You give us darkness for three hours. You shake the earth and bust open graves. You tore the yeah. temple veil. All these things were happening and yet their hearts were so hardened that they said they don't mean nothing. These are just coincidences. And that's the, what I look at the world that we live in today. So many people are seeing all the things yes. that's going on and yet their heart is so hard that they brush it off and say these are all coincidences. And God is saying, can you not see that I'm soon coming? It's a sign. But it's a sign of God's redemption for that moment when all these things was going on. It was God accepting the sacrifice of His Son. This is the plan that He sent His Son in order to accomplish and he paid it. Number four, we see that also the heavens declare God's judgment. We see in Exodus, not three minutes, not three hours, but three days. Here's what God did in judgment with nature. In Exodus 10, 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. That's that darkness I was telling you. If you ever get to, if you get in Mammoth Cave and they turn the lights out, you will know what that verse means. You feel it. To your inner being, you feel it. It's a, it's a darkness. It's a darkness. I remember it. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days, but all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. Just right off, right outside the city. In Hebron, there was light. But in Egypt, God revealed himself to Pharaoh and to the Egyptians with great darkness. God used nature to reveal himself through judgment. To show them he was real. You know, there was another, this, I, I hadn't seen this before. And I'm just going just gonna to give you this. I can't fully back it up. This was something that was researched that was on Bible, Arche Arche so you can find it, BibleArchaeology.org. There was some articles by some, uh, by some biblical scholars that tracked uh, solar eclipses. And they tracked back that in the very time of Jonah's uh, period when he would have preached and he'd been in that large fish's belly for three days, there was a eclipse that lasted for days. Let me, let me read you the verse in Jonah 1.17. Now the Lord had prepared, by the way we say the whale, because we, that's what we can relate to today. It doesn't say a whale, does it? It says a great fish. 
prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah, verse 1 of verse uh, uh, 8, or, or chapter 2, Jonah 2, verse 1. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. He was there. Now, you can imagine the complete darkness that Jonah... By the way, why is Jonah there? Because of his rebellion? Because of his sin? Because he would not shine the love that God asked him to come upon this nation of Nineveh? This great city that they project was 175,000 people living there and they were the arch enemies. He hated them. He had hate in his heart. Well, that's not God. We looked at that today. God's love, right? God is the very essence of love and love comes from God. And so he told him to go preach to have mercy. He was going to ask them to repent because God was getting ready to pour out his wrath if he didn't. Judgment had come to a point where God was going to have to destroy the city. But God always precedes judgment with mercy. Amen. And so he told Jonah, you go preach to them and you show my love. I ain't doing it. I'm going to go the opposite way. How many have how many found this out already? You can't get away from God. That's right. I tested that. You can't get away from God. You can't. So he gets on a boat going the absolute opposite direction. What happens? God knows where he's at. God's waiting. God, hey, just imagine this. Before Jonah was born... And before Jonah even knew, God already had a plan because he had, he had to create this fish. And this, create, this fish started out as a little tadpole or whatever size it was and kept growing, 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 growing. Now we got this. At the very moment when this fish was right where it needed to be, at the exact spot it needed to be, God had prepared a fish to be ready to do his will. The yeah. fish had more obedience than Jonah. Amen. Nature has more obedience than, than, than we do many times. And here we see this fish. Of course, Balaam's donkey, many examples. But we see that he was cast into the, into the sea because of the judgment that was coming in this great storm. And the fish, he didn't drown. The fish was waiting on him and it swallowed him. Three days, he's laying in the darkness of the belly of that. Can you imagine the darkness in the belly of a fish with all that acid, with all the seaweed and fish heads floating around you, laying there pinned up in total darkness? And all you could do is think, if I only obeyed the word of God. Yeah. If I only did what he said, I deserve this. And I can hear, can you hear the prayer meeting going on in that yeah, belly of that fish for three days? He's crying out for mercy. Lord, forgive this sinner. Forgive me for my yeah. hardened heart. Give me a chance, Lord. Please have mercy on me. And we know that for three, what there's significance in these three days. Yeah. It's a picture of the Christ going to be in, in the grave for three days. There's just significance in this. Of course, he's humbling this man. And boy, is he a different man when he comes out, the, when he gets vomited up on the shore. But archaeologists have found that there was this maybe even three-day eclipse that happened in the history about the time of Jonah's life. And they conclude that it very well could have been going on at the very time that he was in this fish. And I, when you look at that, you can say, well, even if it didn't, we see that this, 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 this hardened nation that God is getting ready to preach judgment and, and repentance to, can you imagine if they were in this darkness for three days, how that might have softened their hearts and saying, is God trying to tell us something? And the next thing you know, this man is vomited up by a great fish on the seashore. Probably, I've heard he's probably bleached white from the acid in the stomach of the, uh, uh, of the fish. He's been floating around in acid for three days. He probably looks as white as you can look. He's probably a little freaky looking. And he comes proclaiming, God sent me to give you a message. You need to repent. You need to repent because in, what is it, 40 days? Judgment's coming upon yes. you. You will be destroyed. Yes. And Scripture says that from the king all the way down to the lowest person, they repented and they got out with sackcloth, uh, sackcloth and ashes and they cried out for mercy. Yes. God uses even nature to cause people to turn toward Him. If only we would see that in the country and the time that we live. God is using nature to get our attention. Amen. Finally today, we've, we have seen that, man, nature's got quite a bit to tell us. God's, 
as declares his nature, declares God's glory. Nature declares God's authority. Nature declares God's redemption. Nature declares God's judgment. And finally today, the heavens declare God's son's return. Hallelujah. He's coming soon. We looked a couple of months ago. We was talking about all this end time prophecy and, and the things that were getting ready to be fulfilled and how Israel and the things that they're going through is fulfilling the very uh, plan that God shows us and to get us where we need to be exactly for the coming of the Lord and how the, all the nations will turn against them. And you're seeing it more and more. Even as we're dealing with some of the things that's going on, there is a term with the United States which was solidly with them. Now we're pushing them to cease fire and to pull back and don't attack. And so there is a total change of opinion even with people who were supporting them in the beginning. The world will turn against Israel eventually. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. It is. We see that the end times that scripture tells us that, that talks about this great day of the Lord. This day of the Lord that's coming and that's when he will actually come and touch down on earth. But there's an event that happened seven years before that yes. we know is the rapture of the church. There is nothing withholding him from coming back in the next 15 seconds. That's right. There is nothing that would keep the Lord oh, from coming back Lord before the day is over with. So we need to realize that don't be waiting for any other signs because there is none that has to happen for the Lord to come back. But we see that scripture tells us that even after the rapture takes place, that there is signs that the heavens will declare this great day of the Lord is coming and coming soon. And it says in Luke, and here's what it says, in Luke 21, 25, when we're about to close, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth, distress of the nations. Boy, we're distressed now, aren't we? Yeah. With perplexity, the seas and the waves roaring, men's heart failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up. Lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. See, the Lord is soon coming. The Lord's return, even the heavens, declare His return is soon. Even though we look at these events that we're seeing and not one of those by themselves maybe give a prophetic picture of what's coming, but when you look at the great intensity, we see this massive earthquake 7.5 about a week ago. And then we see in Maryland, New York area, there's another earthquake happened this week. And we've got all these events that I was reading you that's, that is being poured out even at the moment that we're living. By tomorrow, a bunch more things will be happening at the same time. It is just a sign to show us the Lord's coming soon. Amen. The Lord's Lord coming soon. Magnitude of all these earthquakes, tornadoes, Floods, pandemics, disease. It's coming toward us at a record speed. You get to where you're so desensitized because we see so much. We see so much. It doesn't even seem to phase us anymore. But don't let us be blind as those that were at that cross were except for the Romans. Are you seeing with spiritually eyes wide open what's going on? Is our eyes open? But instead of being fearful, instead of being troubled, we should as Christians rejoice yes, Lord's for the Lord's coming soon. Oh, it should make us pray a lot more. Yes. It should make us appeal to those that we love more. It should cause us to be concerned about the souls. But it should cause us to rejoice because we don't have to be troubled because we serve a Lord who has already won the battle and He's going to soon call His children home. Amen.
Yeah. Is your eyes spiritually open to what is going on? Yeah. Do we see these things? Teach your children, teach your families. This is just a proof that we serve such an amazing, wondrous God. Oh, yeah. The things that we see, that God would create these massive things that we can't even wrap our mind around. And yet, He took the time to love little me and little you. Yeah. What an amazing God. Yeah. Are you ready for that moment that's going to yeah, happen yes. in a twinkling of an eye? There won't be a get ready, get you, get yourself lined out a pre-trumpet blast, there's going to be catching away, gone. Just like that. Gone. Faster than that. Much faster than that. Gone. gone. Disappeared. Mm. Called out. The dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we which, which shall remain will be caught up to them to meet Him in the air. Amen? Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Sure. The heavens declare sure. the glory of God. What an amazing God we serve. Yes. What amazing God that everything you see, all the great splendors, and when you look in it, if you get a chance to go to a planetarium or look through those glasses I was telling you about or whatever, when you get a chance to see it, and it's amazing. I've been to a planetarium, and it blows your mind of how we're such, we're so little and insignificant, and yet God loves us so much. Oh, yes. That the, just the, God didn't have to take, God took us, and he formed man with his own hands out of dust. Yet with the planets, these incredible things, he spoke them into existence. He spoke with man. He took his own hands. He loves us that much. And when he died, he took his own hands to show how much he loved you. What an amazing God we serve. Oh, yes. And when we see these events happening in the days to come and we get to see little pieces of this wondrous nature that God's created, it should cause us to give glory and worship and sure. praise to a holy God who has so much to prove that He exists and that He loves us so much that He gave so much for us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand this morning and bow our heads. Hallelujah. Lord, thank You. Thank you that, Lord, in all that you've created, Lord, numbers that we can't even imagine that you created and you spoke and you put things in order. And, Lord, you took the time to love us individually. You have got so, you have plans for our lives. You're working, you're drawing, you're moving, you're trying to draw us closer because you love us so much. Lord, let us not look and serve you from a distance, but God, let us... Lord, draw you even near to us. God, as we come closer to you, for God, you are there waiting to meet with each and every one of us. You love us, God. You have such wondrous plans for our lives. If we will just surrender, God, let us not be blinded. Let us not have spiritual hardened hearts that we cannot take and see the things that are happening as a sign that you are coming soon. Lord, if there be one person in this room today or online that God does not know you, no excuses, God, break down every barrier, break every chain, put away every excuse, but that today they would call out on you and ask you to wash them white as snow. You're waiting to do it. Lord, you love them so much. You'll meet them right here in this altar. You'll meet them right here and you'll wash them white as snow. Thank you for your love this morning and for what you're going to do. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Keep your heads bowed just for a second. No one look around. This morning, if you're in the service today, and you're amazed by what power and what awesome glory that God has revealed through nature and to you, but you don't know Him today, you can. Yes. And this won't save you, but I want to know who to pray for this morning. And if you don't know the Lord, but you want to know this God that reveals Himself in such great ways so that you will know Him and know that He loves you and you want to know Him, would you just raise your hand and say, pray for me, brother. Pray for me. Yes, I see that. And you can put your hand down. Yes, I, I, I want to know Him. I want to know this God who loves me so much that He's revealed Himself just so I would know He's drawing me. Is that you? Anybody else this morning? that may not know the Lord, today is the day. Today is the day to get to know Him. And He's waiting 
He's waiting just as He's Amen. waited for each and every one of us. He was waiting for you, wasn't He? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. How many today is encouraged with the things that God has given us to let us know He's real? It's not just oh, all yeah. faith. We can know He's real because He reveals Himself. Oh, yeah. Amen. This morning, as Sister Priscilla plays, I would ask you first, if you want to know Him, all, it, this, all you've got to do is come forward and receive Him. Ask Him. Call out on Him and we'll pray with you so that you leave here knowing that the God that's created all these things is also living within your heart. He wants to wash away every sin. He wants to give you peace. And if that's you here today, don't leave without receiving Him. Would you come forth? Would you just come up front and let us gather around and pray with you and ask God to have His way? Hallelujah. This altar is open. Hallelujah. Would you come? Hallelujah. God, have your way. God, speak. God, move. God, have your way this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Folks, this altar is open. Come and pray. Hallelujah. Pray with each other. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, have your way in this altar, God. Hallelujah. God, meet us at this altar, God. Lord, save. God, move. God, let us know you, God. You're wanting to know us. And God, you're calling us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you.
I just want to let Ken just, uh, just aren't we so excited that Ken's came and prayed, amen. He's giving me a little testimony there, and I just think everybody ought to hear that. I know I'm putting him on the spot. But I think the Lord, you know, the Lord says after he does it that we need to confess. We need to confess. And he was telling me how the Lord's been dealing with him all week long. And just, and that's an answer to prayer, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's an answer to prayer. Tell him kind of what the Lord's done for you. Amen. He's been tugging at me all week. More, and I've always fought him every other time that I yes. felt like this. And he's, I've tried to fight against him and fight against him. And oh. today, just I couldn't fight no more. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's the Lord done for you today? Yeah. He saved me today. Hallelujah. Hey, man. Isn't that, that's what it's all about. Man. That's what it's all about. Pray. Let's just thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God, this is what your heart does, Lord. It draws. You love us, God. You love us so much that you stir our hearts and draw us so you can bring us to the place that you can do the work to wash us clean and wash us white as snow. God, we pray that you would continue, Lord, strengthening and encouraging and moving in Ken's life. And God, that you would show yourself might let others see. Let others see you through his life. Thank you, God. This is the very purpose of your coming. This is the very, thank you, God, that heaven's rejoicing even now for a sinner has come on. And God, let this be a first fruit of many, many others. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. How many is going to keep praying for Ken? Amen. Amen. No matter what happens, you stay right in the house. You get in this house. And you don't let the devil get no, no no the next thing happens he tries to keep you from coming. Yeah. He'll try to keep you from coming. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We were actually in church last night. He wanted to go to church last night. Oh, that's all. Just so happened the preacher didn't show up. Just unexpectedly. Nobody knew that he wasn't coming. And I told Kim, I said that's safe. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, yeah. that's the, and that tells me the, the an awesome hand of God on your life that he because anybody else would have gave up and said, "Well, I ain't, I, I ain't going to yeah. go tomorrow." Yeah. But you came, and the Lord's rewarded you because of it. Yeah. And I pray this be the best first day of your. It, you got a brand new life. Yeah. First brand new every sin. I don't care what you've done. I don't have to know what you've done. The Lord will wash you completely. Yeah. 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 Tomorrow morning when the devil says that wasn't just nothing but just a, some experience I had. Probably not, that's a lie. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord washes you while he's faithful to his word. And that, I can just tell by the smile on your face. Oh yeah. yeah. You feel the Lord, yeah. what he's done in your heart. Yeah. And you all, when you wake up tomorrow, you be praying for King. Yeah. Yeah. You pray the Lord would encourage him and yeah. you, you stay Amen. here. You've yeah. got a group right here that loves you. Yes. Yeah. And we'll we'll back you and pray with you. And oh, this, yeah. and folks, this is what it's all about. Yeah. Right here. Yeah. We come in, have good time, talk and have it. But when people get say this altar, yeah. I want to knock out the altar and make it bigger is what I want. Right. What I really I want yeah. this to be full. Yeah. I want and I and, and people's praying, get in behind them, encourage them. Yes. I'll tell you it's a rare thing. What Kim I just want to encourage you because this is I don't get to do this very often. Yeah. <laughs> Been praying about this, yeah. and uh, yeah, that the Lord would bring in more souls. That's what yeah. it's all about. Yeah. But I'm telling you that this this is the name of the game. This is what we're here for, yeah. and God wants to bless through the altar. God wants to bring in souls, and time is short. Time yeah. is short. Yeah. Time is short. Yeah. And so when when I want to encourage you, when people are seeking, I know sometimes that we get kind of backward. We don't think we can. Just pray for them. Just put your hand on them. Call out God. Pray, encourage them. There's nothing more encouraging because not everybody comes. I could, man, you could just feel Ken had a, wanted to get a hold of God and needed to get a hold of God and just just pray. Just so wonderful. But I just just keep praying for him. Oh yeah, keep praying for him. You know when he come and he's up here praying, I said that's the real thing. That's the real thing. Because you could tell the way he was praying. Right, right. He had tears. Yes. Oh yes. And you want you see a lot of dry eyes. Yes. Yes. And you go no more. That's right. There you go. Amen. 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 Yeah, just just remember that tomorrow morning when that. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. You all make sure you welcome me into the family of God when we get done here. God's good, isn't it? Amen. God's good. Amen. 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 We're going to be dismissed and let you all fellowship here and welcome Ken if you haven't got to. And I'm sure Rita's excited.
Amen. Let's just thank the Lord as we dismiss. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your mercy that you reach out and you love us. God, that Lord, to bring us to new life, to eternal life. Thank you for what you've done in Ken's life. Thank you. Encourage us all, Lord, that we would reach out in faith and pray even harder for those that we want to see in this altar. And that God would be like a magnet that would draw people Hallelujah. that need you to the altar. And there would be real tears of repentance right. that Lord would keep this altar wet. Yes. And God, we thank you because you love us. That's why you're doing yes. it. Amen. You love us. And yes. you love those that, are, that you're drawing. And go with us.